Okay, we are back, and this is Homework Help 3.1. I have my cup of coffee now, and so we are going to get started with number 29. Now, I have several in this section, 29, 37, and 39, that I'm going to do, and the directions for all of those is the same. Um, it's use the limit definition to compute f prime of a and find an equation of the tangent line. Okay, so we're going to find f prime in this situation right here we're going to find f prime of three so i want to give you a visual of what we're doing right here so here is my function here's a graph of my function right here okay the parabola that's the 2x squared plus 10x and i am looking for the slope of this line right here okay the point that they intersect is 348 and this is a tangent line. It is just touching. So I am looking for the equation and the slope of this line right here. That's, that's the definition of the derivative. It is the slope of what the, the tangent line is at a specific point on a graph. And this is where that point is that we're looking for. So um, this is my original function right here. Um, this is the line that gives me the, it's the tangent line, the tangent line, the one that touches the graph at this point, x equals 3. So what we are looking for in this situation right here is we are looking for this line, the equation of this line right here. And before we do that, we have to find the slope of that line, and we do that by using the definition of the derivative. Now, in chapter, um, chapter 3... The rest of chapter three, we're going to be learning all of our derivatives rules so that we don't have to go through this process every single time that we want to find the derivative. Okay. So let's get started. Now we've talked about two different equations. One is the um, difference, e difference quotient that you learned in Math 112, and then one is slope. And you can use either one of these. Like the last couple of problems, we were asked to do both. We're not asked to do both here. We just need to... Um, use one or the other. So let's do this one using the difference quotient, okay? So I've got f prime of 3 is going to equal the limit as h approaches 0, and we're going to do f of 3 plus h minus f of 3 all over h, okay? Now, um, I'm going to need to do a little bit of side work because I've got to FOIL my 3 plus h. So I've got f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0. I'm going to plug 3 plus h in for x. So I have 2 times 3 plus h squared plus 10 times 3 plus h. Okay. Then I'm going to subtract f of 3. So I need to find out what f of 3 is. Okay. So my a value is 3. So I'm going to plug 3 in, and I'm going to have 2 times 3 squared plus 10 times 3, okay? And when I do that, I get f of 3 is 18 plus 30, and that's going to give me 48. So um, another thing that we need to remember about what I did right here is this right here is going to be helpful when I do my line, the equation of the tangent line, because that's going to be my ordered pair that I'm going to use. So now I've got um, my f of 3, and that is going to be 48. So I'm subtracting 48 right there, and all of this is over h. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a little bit of side work over here, and I'm going to do 2 times 3 plus h squared. Now, I'm going to go ahead and, and talk to you about a very, very common mistake that happens a lot in calculus, okay? Students know that that 3 has to be distributed, and so many times, so many times, I see 9 plus 3h squared. Students will distribute that 3 before they square that binomial. And this binomial right here has to be squared first. You can't distribute that 3 yet. I don't see it as often when a binomial is just squared, 
But once we start dealing with rational exponents, when a binomial is raised to like a one half power or a four fifths power, um, or when I've got a much higher power there, a lot of times I'm seeing students try to distribute that number outside before they raise it to whatever that power is. And, and you just can't do that. Remember that um, exponents and square roots are higher in the order of operations than multiplication. So that's a that's an area that students sometimes um, make a mistake. It's a pretty common mistake. So I want you to um, be aware of that. So what we have to do right here is we have to FOIL this. And when I FOIL this, I end up with 9 plus 6H plus H squared. And then I'm going to distribute that 3. Nope, I'm distributing a 2. Don't know where I got a three from. Oh, I do know where I got a three from. Our A value is three, okay? So it's this right here is two. Okay, so I have 18 plus 12H plus 2H squared. Now, this right here is only this right here, okay? So I haven't done anything with the 10 times three plus H. Okay, so now I've got f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of 18 plus 12h plus 2h squared. Now I'm going to distribute that 10, and I'm not raising this to a power, so it's fine to distribute that 10. So 30 plus 10h minus 48. And all of that is over H. Okay, so now we're going to do some cleanup. Okay, I have 18, 30, and negative 48. So all of those are going to cancel. Okay, so now I have F prime is going to be the limit as h approaches 0, and I have 12h plus 2h squared plus 10h all over h. Um, I am going to – oh, there we go. So that 12h and that 10h can combine. So f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of 2h squared plus 22h over h. Okay, and now we're going to factor out the h. So I have h times 2h plus 22 over h. My h's cancel. So now I'm finding f prime of 3. I'm finding the slope when x equals 3. The limit of as h approaches 0 of 2h plus 22. And when I plug that in, I am going to get 22. So my slope at x equals 3 is f prime of 3 is 22, okay? So that's my slope. This is my slope right here, okay? Then this is the point on the line. So I have my slope right here. My slope is here, and this is the point on the line, okay? So we are going to... You, and I'm actually going to go ahead and go to the next page. So we have our slope of 22. And the point was 348. So I'm going to use my point slope form of my line. So I'm going to have y minus 48 equals 22 times x minus 3. Okay, let's go ahead and put that in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to have y minus 48 equals 22x minus 
66. I'm going to add 48 to both sides, and I have y equals 22x minus 18. Okay. Okay. And this right here is this, the equation of this tangent line. Okay, so what we are finding in these next couple of problems is the equation of the tangent line. Okay, and 37 and 39, um, the algebra gets a little bit more intense. So let's walk through those two with the algebra. Okay, so number 37, f of x is 1 over x plus 3. Okay, a is negative 2. So we are finding the equation of the tangent line of this function right here when our x value is negative 2. That's what we're finding, okay? We're looking at this function, and we're looking for the tangent line of this function when x is negative 2. So this time, we're going to use the slope formula, change in y over change in x, to, to do this. So we're going to do f prime of negative 2. And we're going to have f of x minus f of negative 2 over x minus negative 2. OK, so be careful right here, because you've got minus a negative. Um, let's go ahead and find f of negative 2, because we're going to need that um, throughout the, the problem. So I've got f of negative 2, so I'm going to plug that negative 2 into x. So I've got 1 over negative 2 plus 3. Okay, and so f of negative 2 is going to be positive 1. So my ordered pair here is going to be negative 2, 1. And that will be, once we find the slope, that's going to be important uh, when we do point-slope form of the line. Okay, so, and we need to write limit as x approaches negative 2. So, here we go. f prime of negative 2 is the limit as x approaches negative 2 of f of x, which is 1 over x plus 3, minus f of negative 2, and we know that to be 1, and all of this is going to be over x plus 2, okay? Now, I'm going to go ahead and put that x plus 2 over 1, and I'm going to put that 1 over 1, because we have a complex fraction, and the way that we deal with complex fractions is we multiply the numerator by the LCD and the denominator by the LCD, okay? Okay. F prime of negative 2 equals the limit as x approaches negative 2. Um, and then I have x plus 3 over x plus 3 minus x plus 3 over 1 over x plus 2 times x plus 3. Now, remember, I, I don't want you to multiply this out yet because I'm hoping we'll be able to cancel something. That's what I'm hoping. Okay, and so then I'm going to put this over 1. Okay, so now let's clean up. So I have f prime of negative 2 equals the limit as x approaches negative 2. Okay, x plus 3 over x plus 3 is 1. I've got to distribute this right here. That's an area that students make mistakes. I've got to distribute that negative. This minus is everything over here. So we're going to make this plus, and then we're going to put a negative 1 right there, and that has to be distributed. Okay, that's a common mistake that students make. I don't want to foil the denominator because I'm hoping I can cancel something out. Okay, now, again, don't cancel this. That can't be canceled. This has not been simplified and to the point that I can cancel. So for something to be able to cancel, I've got to have x plus 3 
times maybe negative four or something like that. And here I've got this distri distribution and I'm going to have like terms that I've got to combine. So f prime of negative two equals the limit as x approaches negative two of one minus x minus three over x plus two times x plus three. Okay. Um, f prime of negative two equals the limit as x approaches negative two, and then I am left with negative x minus two. Now, that's not exactly what we need. Okay, I've got negative x minus two in the numerator, I have x plus two in the denominator. So what can I do here that will help me cancel? And I hope you're thinking I can factor out a negative one because that is what you want to do. So I have f prime of negative two equals the limit as x approaches negative two of negative one times x plus two over x plus two, x plus three. Okay, and I can cancel these right here. So at this point, I'm left with f prime of negative two equals the limit as x approaches negative two of negative one over x plus three. Okay, and now we are in a situation where I can plug that in. So f prime of negative two is gonna be negative one over negative two plus three. So my slope at x equals negative two is negative one, okay? Now I have my slope and my ordered pair. So I have y minus one, because I'm using this ordered pair right here. That's my ordered pair that I'm using, and this is my slope right here, okay? So I have y minus one, equals a slope of negative one, and then I have x minus negative two. Okay, so y minus one equals negative one x. Now, right here, this minus negative two becomes plus. Then I have a negative one times positive two, so that's gonna give me negative two. I'm going to add 1 to both sides, and my final answer is going to be y equals negative x minus 1. So this is the equation of the tangent line at x equals negative 2. So this right here is my final answer. Okay. Okay, number 39 is the last one I'm going to do for this section. Um, and we're going to brush off our square root and rational skills. So lots of good, lots of good skill review right here. Okay, so this is number 39. We are um, doing the same thing. Uh, use the limit definition to compute f prime of a and find an equation of the tangent line. So f of x is the square root of x plus 4. Okay, and my a value is going to be 1. Okay, we know that we're going to have to know what f of, of a is, so we're going to go ahead and plug that 1 in. f of 1, and that is going to be the square root of 1 plus 4, and the square root of 1 plus 4 is the square root of 5. So we do have to brush off those skills and remember how to use um, radicals and what we have to do with radicals and when we can combine radicals. Okay. So now I have um, f prime of 1 is going to be the limit as x approaches 1. Okay, and I'm going to use slope. Um, you'll, you'll find one that you're, you like a little bit better. It's, it's really fine. If you wanted to use the difference quotient, you could. I'm just going to use change in y over change in x as x approaches the 1 value. So I'm going to have f of x minus f of 1, and all of that is going to be over x minus 1, okay? So this is my change in y values, change in x values, and I'm finding the limit 
as these two values get closer and closer and closer together. Okay, so f prime of 1 is the limit as x approaches 1. f of x is the square root of x plus 4. Okay, f of 1 is the square root of 5, and I've got minus the square root of 5, and then all of this is over x minus 1. And once you got to this point right here, this is maybe where you get, got stuck. And if you think back to our lesson on indeterminate forms, I hope you're thinking that you need to rationalize this numerator right here, because that is what you need to do. You need to rationalize the numerator to get this into a form where we can um, plug 1 in. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rationalize my numerator. So that means I'm going to multiply by its conjugate. So this is going to be the square root of x plus 4 plus the square root of 5. That's its conjugate. If I multiply the numerator by that, I also have to multiply the denominator by that. Okay. Now, I'm going to do this FOIL process <coughs> right here on the side because some excuse me sometimes that confuses students so I just want to remind you what that looks like so we, we're foiling this so I have the square root of x plus 4 um, minus the square root of 5 times the square root of x plus 4 plus the square root of 5 okay so we're foiling square root of x plus 4 times the square root of x plus 4 is x plus 4 Okay, that just, just remember, if I've got the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, that's the square root of 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. So when I multiply square root of x plus 4 times the square root of x plus 4, I get what's inside that square root symbol. Okay. Now, I've got the square root of x plus 4 times the square root of 5. So, that gives me positive square root of 5 times the square root of x plus 4. Okay, now I'm going to do my inner terms. That's negative square root of 5 times positive square root of x plus 4. So I'm going to have negative square root of 5 times square root of x plus 4. Okay, that's my inner terms right there. Then I've got negative square root of 5 times positive square root of 5, and that's going to give me minus 5. I ran out of room. I apologize. Okay? Now, what you need to know is that these cancel out. That's what happens. We're using the difference of perfect squares. Multiplying by the conjugate, this is a plus value, this is a minus value. So when I simplify this, I am left with x plus 4 minus 5. And that is going to be x minus 1. Okay? That is, so what we did is we rationalized the numerator. You're used to rationalizing the denominator. But sometimes in calculus, we need to rationalize the numerator. So our numerator now is f prime of 1 equals the limit as x approaches 1 of x minus 1 over, and we've got x minus 1 in the denominator, but don't forget, we had to multiply the denominator by this right here. Okay, so then I have the square root of x plus 4 plus the square root of 5. Okay, now we are left with 1 in the numerator, and this is why we don't multiply the denominator out, because we're hoping something cancels. Okay, so kind of hang tight with that denominator to see if you can cancel something. So now I have f prime of 1 equals the limit as x approaches 1 of 1 over square root of x plus 4 plus square root of 5. We're in a position now where I can plug that 1 in because it is not undefined at that value. Okay. Actually, because I'm about to plug things in, I don't have to write that anymore. So I have 1 over the square root of 1 plus 4 plus the square root of 5. Okay. 
and now we have f prime of 1 equals 1 over square root of 5 plus square root of 5, and that is 2 on the square root of 5. So we definitely are brushing off those algebra skills. Now, this is my slope. And one of the nice things about calculus is, is we don't have to worry about rationalizing that denominator. Uh, we're going to be dealing with square roots in the denominator. And in calculus, the expectation that you simplify that next step, it, it's just not there. And I know in trig and I know in 112 and all of those, you did have to do it. And so that's a little, little perk of calculus is you don't have to worry about um, rationalizing that denominator. Now what we're going to do, um, we have our slope now. So my slope is 1 over 2 on the square root of 5, and we also have our ordered pair. So my ordered pair is 1 square root of 5. So 1 square root of 5 is my ordered pair and my slope. So here's my ordered pair, and here is my slope. So I'm going to go ahead and move to the next page for us to find our line. Okay. Okay. So I have uh, my slope is 1 over 2 on the square root of 5. Um, and my ordered pair was 1 square root of 5. Okay. So I have y minus the square root of 5 equals 1 over 2 on the square root of 5 times x minus 1. Okay, we're not done. Still got to do some work here. So I've got y minus the square root of 5 equals 1 over 2 on the square root of 5 times x minus 1 over 2 on the square root of 5. Okay, now I need to add the square root of 5 to both sides. And I can combine. I can combine. Okay, so this is going to be y equals 1 over 2 on the square root of 5x. Now, these two things right here can be combined. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to um, multiply this by my common denominator. So my common denominator is going to be 2 on the square root of 5 and that's two on the square root of five. So I'm just making a common denominator right here. So then I have negative one over two on the square root of five plus two on the square root of five, okay? Square root of five times square root of five is just five. And then I have a two right here. So that's gonna be two times five. So that's gonna be 10. Okay, and so then I have 9 over 2 on the square root of 5. And there is our equation for our tangent line.